Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I want to share with you a clip from a recent live event. And in this one, you're going to see Axler Twinblade, the creator of Baron's Toolbox. And he's going to be sharing with us an idea for a proposal. We're going to call this one a pre-proposal. -pre and it's going to have to do with soulbound reward cards being made transferable in a new way, in an innovative way, other than maybe we've thought through so far. And I think this is going to benefit human players, especially those who have an SPS bag. And so I think this is logical, thoughtful, important. And I hope you'll stick around, watch the video, leave feedback, because Axler is going to read the comments and use it to generate the best possible proposal that helps our game and our community the most. There's something really special about Splinterlands, and it actually comes out of the fact that we are decentrally run. Like there's this decentralized nature of from the ground up, we can see constructive ideas coming out of the community. This is one of those. This is an opportunity for you, even in the creation phase of that idea, to actually have a voice and to have impact on where our game goes. So stick around, leave a comment and have an amazing day. God bless. You know what, actually we should, it's five, five o'clock and I need to go soon. Let's spend 15 minutes and talk about the proposal that you were, you know, uh, wanting to bring forward. We got 29 people hanging out. Thank you so much, guys. Drop a like, uh, Axler Twin Blade, NFO Guides, um, creator of the, uh, of the Baron's Toolbox. Um, and we just met each other last week and we've been chatting. So we popped on here today to do, uh, do a live and talk about Splinterlands. But Baron had a cool idea. Do you want to, do you, you do want to talk about it right now? um axler uh we can we can bring it up i'm sure it's it's more, one of those things that we can just kind of present and yes. maybe some everybody can leave some comments uh on the video uh so we can read through them later and and uh, maybe we can revisit it in more of a, a long tail uh, yes conversation yeah, like from what I'm, I think it'd be valuable because you're 30 people hanging out and these guys are, you know, they've been here. Most of these names are people that have been here through the whole bear. So they, they see, they have that deep interest that we do too. So hopefully we can have this cumulative, uh, you know, thought where it's like we all bring something to the conversation and through the chat, we can kind of hopefully grow, but yeah, um, uh, maybe you can introduce the idea that you're proposing and it's not a proposal. It's just a conversation really at this moment, but um you have an idea for vouchers you have an idea for soul bounds yeah so uh i have the information up on my screen if you want to share it you can if you don't that's fine i'll talk through it okay okay so the idea that i'm trying to present is something that i want to bring up as a proposal so this is kind of a conversation even before a pre-proposal phase um so what i've been thinking about i've there is a huge conversation going on in a pre-proposal about unlocking of soulbound cards. And that was going on with Clayboyne and some other people, and it was getting tons of comments. Then during the town hall, Yava Matt uh, kind of didn't say to stop talking about it. He just says, you know, he has some ideas as well, and he thinks, you know, if it's going to encompass something, it should encompass all of, the whole aspect and so he just wanted people to kind of take a step back and talk a little bit more. My idea, I feel, comes into middle ground from the conversations I was hearing and seeing in the threads. I tried to post this in the threads on Peak D, but the conversation was locked. Mm. Okay. So the basic idea is this. Soulbound cards. Right now, let's exclude Gladius cards. They have a much longer track record. They have different burn rates. So we'll just exclude uh, Soulbound Gladius cards for now. But with all the other Soulbound cards that we have to date and in the future, if they release more, yeah. my concept is they are never permanently unlocked. Mm -hmm. um, my idea is around the, the aspect of let's take... If you want to move a soulbound card, there will be a voucher fee. And in my mind, this fee is all done with vouchers. Um, I'll explain why a little bit here in a second. So just for the sake of the conversation, we'll say if you want to unlock a card temporarily, it'll cost you 10 vouchers. And so let's say you have a one BCX comment. If you want to list that on the market, you would pay a 10 voucher fee and you can list it on the market. It will stay there until it gets kicked off the market or somebody buys it. As soon as somebody buys it, 
they own the card and the card becomes soul locked to the new owner. So it was a uh, temporary unlock. In the same regard, if that new owner wants to sell the card, they also will have to pay the 10 voucher fee to list it on the market. So that's how sales would work. Mm. And then if it was a rental, the concept would be very similar. If you want to list the card for rent, you would pay the fee to temporarily unlock it. You would list it on the market. It will stay on the rental market forever as long as people are renting it, unrenting it, renting it, unrenting it. Nobody pays any additional fees. It's always that initial person who put it on rent paid the initial voucher fee. And when the renting is done, it kicks back to the owner. Or if you pull that card back, it will lock again to your account. So if you want to relist it, or if you want to change the price, you will need to pay the voucher fee again to relist it or to change the price. And the reason to I'm saying changing of the price is because um, there's been problems in the past where people list things on the market and they always want to get like one half a penny beneath the next guy. And this kind of prevents that. So if you're going to list a soulbound card on the market, you better have a good idea that your price is a reasonable price and people will want to rent it. Because when somebody else lists theirs, you don't want to sit there and try to unlist yours, uh, cancel it on the person who's renting it, pull it back and pay another 10 vouchers to relist it one penny cheaper than the other guy. Um, so this is on purpose to prevent that behavior. Yeah, it makes uh, sense. If you want to outright give the card to somebody you same same scenario you'd select the card you would say who you're sending it to and you would pay a voucher fee to unlock that card temporarily allow the transfer to the new owner as soon as the new owner has the card it is soul bound to the new owner mm -hmm. now i should say the fee for a card is the same across the board a 1 BCX common is no different than a 400 BCX common. It is the same fee. The reason I'm looking at it from this perspective is all the bot farms out there, the true farms that are out there, they won't want to list thousands of common 1 BCX cards on the market for that voucher cost. Yeah. They may list quite a few max level copies. They might think that's uh equitable and that's that's fine but the they can still move those cards there's an interesting thing that i see in there that i wanted to touch on when we last talked i didn't really articulate this because he shared this idea with me before guys and i i, I like this idea i I'm, I'm reading the comments in the chat while uh, we ta we chat here so please let us know if there's feedback you want because Axler is looking for feedback um but the one thing i really am interested in there Axler, around like uh there's essentially a fee to get it into the market or to use it, to move it in some sense, really. Um, it's interesting because you are going to incentivize consolidation of those assets, which means that there will be forever like a limited number of really low BCX because there would be no meaningful value to like spending a, sub, you know, a 10 voucher, a five voucher, a, like a set fee to move one BCX just doesn't make much sense. And so you're going to see, you're going to incentivize consolidation of BCX so that moving them makes any sense at all. And that is going to deter sort of the easy access to low BCX. And I think also that's going to mean that the value, the, the price tag associated with the soul bounds that were available are going is going to be far higher than you would might have otherwise imagined because of that exact mechanic but go but sorry for interrupting and and that is it another aspect of this is it prevents what a lot of people consider these soul bond cards are way 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 overprinted. this prevents overprinted cards from hitting the market being for sale or you know being for rent you're going to see only what people think is worth moving hit the market. So you're going to, you're going to prevent a lot of what people consider overprinted cards 
to stay out of the market, still soul bound to whatever account they are. And what that does for us is it makes a overprinted card set of these soul bounds, the floor price instantly is going to remain high. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if it's a, uh, let's say 10 vouchers is equal to a dollar. That means the cheapest one BCX common on the market will always be one dollar and a penny. It's never going to be a cheaper card than that. So if somebody wants to finish something that they're working on and they need five BCX, well, they can expect that will cost five bucks because people that are listing just a one BCX, they have to pay a dollar just to list it. So basically that's going to hold the floor price higher on what essentially could be an overprinted card set mm -hmm. um and now the higher ones if you want to sell a 400 bcx copy a lot of times that one dollar fee disappears you know what's a dollar when you're selling 400 bcx yep you know the person's most likely not going to care so yes it will kind of limit the low end to being more expensive but the high end, I don't think you'll see any price difference whatsoever on higher end combined cards. Let me throw um, you let me throw you two co comments from the chat here that I think are interesting and relevant because it's the, the they're talking about vouchers. Um, based off of, so JPH spoke. He goes, I think I think it should be based off the dollar amount and not a coin price. Coins move too much, and I think you've said that that's what you're aiming for. Like, are you saying a dollar? or 10 vouchers is that what you're saying um i breezed past that but in my notes here i do say um a set number of vouchers or a dollar worth of vouchers so okay. i'm using the numbers of 10 vouchers as just an arbitrary number maybe yeah. it's five vouchers yeah but realistically the better way to do that would be say 50 cents worth of vouchers mm -hmm. would be a better way to say that mm -hmm. um the the concept is is I really think the unlocking ability needs to be attached to vouchers and not DEC and not SPS because all the bot farms, they get SPS and they can burn that SPS into DEC. Yes. Unless they play the game like a real person is playing and they stake SPS, they will not be getting vouchers for free. Mm hmm. So all of us that have staked SPS, we get these vouchers for free. So those vouchers now become an access token for unlocking soulbound cards. We get them for free. If we want to list more than we have vouchers for, well, then we also need to go buy them. Yep. If the bot farms want to list a bunch of cards and they don't have the vouchers, they are going to have to buy those vouchers from all of us. So in other words, the bot farms will be paying us the i'll call us the human players yeah they will be paying us the human players to buy our vouchers so we get the benefit for allowing them to list their cards on the market now there's one other piece i forgot to mention is i would make it so soulbound cards can these soulbound cards can never be burnt because if you allow them to be burnt, uh, then the bot farms can then just simply burn off all their soulbound cards. Yeah. So now oh. not, let me rephrase that. They should never be burnt for DEC. If there's some other mechanism somebody wants to throw out there, like I heard somebody mention, maybe burn them for merits. I could see maybe something like that. Um, but the main reason is we don't want to have anybody who has just um, been piling tons of cards based on a bunch of bot accounts to be able to easily liquidate um, their supply of or oversupply of cards. Mm -hmm. I think um, there's one more comment and you kind of answered it, but I want to speak to it because I think it's going to underline what you just said there. Um, Elistios, which appreciate you popping by Elistios. It's been a while, but uh, he said, uh, also voucher is a garbage inflationary coin in its current form. So it should be used for something, the same idea you could bring with DC instead, uh, which at least serves the flywheel. No one can, no one cares about vouchers in my opinion. Um, and then, uh, there, and, and you just said, you just said something I think is really important. We need to underline 
which is the idea that it, the voucher is a is actually if you step back and look at it the voucher is and i i what's that phrase it's a representation or a reflection of your commitment and your time in this game right think about think about your sps bag staked producing vouchers that those voucher tokens are an accumulating asset in your portfolio and you're right they're printed and they're printed and they're printed uh Elistios. but the first point is a mechanic like this would delete a lot of them second of all we know that land is going to use vouchers third of all we know that there's gonna be other voucher burn mechanics it seems really clear to me that they're not the inflationary nature is not going to be a problem for the long term i think I feel confident, and I think some of the audience might not, but I feel confident that vouchers are not going to remain three cents for much longer. There's going to be a time when there are going to be too many things and too many useful use cases and too many bonuses and benefits you get out of spending those where you're going to want them. And you're going to use all that you already have, and then you're going to want more. But I think it's really interesting to note that the people who are collecting them are people who have been here with a bag of SPS for a while. Those are the ones that I assume we would all agree are going to be the human players. It's not going to be the bots uh, that have accumulated massive bags. Now they do, and Tails, Tails did a great video talking about how, the, how much SPS sort of the big bot farms have. It was in one in instance, and this is going back a couple months, but in one example, he showed how one major bot farm had like enough, they, they have something like tens of thousands of accounts, but they only had enough SPS to meaningfully equip, I want to say like a hundred accounts. And it, I could be off in the numbers now, but, but I hope you track with my point, which is that the bots are not equipped to meaningfully extract this sort of value. They aren't positioned deeply into the tokenomics of the game. They're often just playing really cheap bronze level accounts to extract the trivial rewards that on an automatic basis to get a little bit of SPS or some reward cards that they in the past have burnt for DC. And in this example, if they could, they would burn for DC. Um, and I think Axler's idea is really attacking the automated side and saying like, if you're a human player, this would really benefit you because you're actually going to see greater benefit for the vouchers. You're going to see the vouchers are a benefit from your SPS. So you're going to see better, greater benefit from your SPS. And he, he talked about like DC would be better because that's a flywheel thing. I think we have to remember that DC is like already at peg. Now, it doesn't mean that wouldn't help to have one more thing thought and in, brought into that conversation. But just to think through, um, I do not believe that vouchers will be sort of so overly inflated forever. And I think everybody who, if you ever do bring this proposal to sort of bear and, and you put it forward, Axler, um, I think... I think that's going to be something we all, when we vote, we have to we have to kind of debate in in response to your proposal or your question, because it's like, do we think vouchers are going to stay cheap forever? Because if we do that, then we don't maybe need, uh, um, then uh, we might think they they shouldn't make sense in this context. You can just always get them. But I think it, it's actually a real benefit to human players because I don't think they'll be cheap forever. I think that they'll be accessible to those who, who have the foresight to carry an SPS bag. And that'll be those who are in this room probably who have been here for years playing the game, enjoying the game, receiving SPS daily. But at some point in the future, you won't have that. And so it'll be us who have been here who will see that benefit. So I'm interested in this. I'm... Um, I don't have too much more time here. My wife's going to expect me in 15 uh, downstairs and I got to help prep with dinner, but I would love to give you a couple more minutes to kind of say anything else you want to say, Axler. And then I would love it if, you know, if the chat, if you guys have great comments, if you want questions or feedback or even critique, uh, Axler Twinbait is like seeking all of that good, bad, ugly. Um, and, and he and I, I would love to have you come back and, and, you know, we could just do a devoted conversation around this topic too. Um, but please, if there's anything like kind of, um, maybe a couple more minutes to talk about this, I'd love to give it to you. Yeah. So, uh, again, just to touch a little bit more on the point about, uh, should do it with DEC and not vouchers. Uh, again, remember all the bot farms are capable of earning SPS. Yes. Which means they have SPS, they have DEC. 
What they don't have is they don't stake their SPS. They don't have vouchers. If they stake all their SPS today, well, they're not going to get 6,000 vouchers by tomorrow because they haven't had it staked over time. So by forcing it to be vouchers, if those bot farms want to move the cards, they can, but they're going to buy all of those vouchers off of us, the humans. We get the benefit, even though the bot farms did the work. Yeah. We will get the money from our voucher sales to them. And so that's really where there's a key difference. If we if we let them be unlocked and moved with deck or uh, SPS, the bot farms have that. Mm -hmm. They don't have vouchers. And in order for them to get that, they have to come through us. In other words, we can be the gatekeepers of how many vouchers we sell. We can be the gatekeepers of how we price that. In my personal opinion, if let's say something like this was in place um, before they actually get the code in place to unlock soulbound cards, I could see something like this making the price of vouchers 2x within a week. Mm. Yeah, you know, if it coincides with with unlocking of soulbound cards. All of us have soulbound cards right now we would love to use on land. Mm -hmm. And I see this as the same thing. To unlock it, to move it to land, I see it as the same thing. A temporary unlock, move it onto your land. And as soon as you pull it off a of land and it comes back into your account, it's locked again. Yeah. So I'm looking, as you said, I'm looking for all feedback. Yeah. I hope this idea doesn't strike the nerve of anybody but if it does please articulate what you feel is wrong with the idea what pain points you see because i would like to bring this to claiboying as a um pre-proposal but i want to get your feedback first so definitely leave feedback in in on the video i'll be watching the comments on the video and after this video i'll be reading through uh the comments during the video and uh, I, I'm just looking for feedback. Mm -hmm. I want this to be something that all of us feel is something that makes sense. And it lets us move our cards at any time, as long as we have whatever dollar amount of vouchers um, available. Yeah. And because we're staking our SPS, we are earning those for free. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I am deeply excited about and I, I shared some of my feedback i won't uh with axler twin blade directly previously um i love the idea of of thinking through how we would make the soulbound reward cards transferable we know that that has been a thing they're thinking about a thing they've talked about you know can we put them in the land you know is that one usefulness and that's one price tag and then making them transferable sellable rentable is a totally different price tag matt has speculated openly about this he doesn't know yet and that's why axlers kind of come in and said well what can we do here like is there an interesting way to think through and i and um you know i i specifically asked him too like what about dc and why not just focus on that but i do like this idea of like vouchers as a that's a reward we get as humans and I, I don't believe that bots are getting it in the same way. And maybe that needs some, that's a thread we almost need to pull on a little bit and like explore how bots are or are not benefiting from vouchers. I suspect the answer is bot farms are generally speaking under equipped with SPS, extracting at the lowest levels of the game and still getting, they don't care if it's point fractional, fractional SPS, they, it adds up across tens of thousands of accounts and they just automate and that's that. So I think this makes sense in that context. Unless there's some sort of complexity about the, you know, how how this would work on the blockchain. Um, so I'm excited by this because I do think, you know, impermanent uh, transferability, meaning like temporarily transferable soulbound reward cards make a lot of sense because that's going to be exciting for a lot of reasons, guys. It would be exciting because it would mean that there will never be a huge amount of cards on the marketplace for these soulbound reward cards. Be not just because of the reason, previous reasons we thought, like you, we thought you would have to pay DEC to make it transferable. That would be one, re one reason to believe that there will be limited 
Ava the Undaunted's on the market eventually, but it's a whole other level of sort of consideration and, and reduction of supply when you start to realize, well, there's actually a voucher cost to do it every time. Like one, if I want to sell it once, sure, but then if you want to sell it another time, it's like that can get out of, out of hand in a sense in a, in a great way where in once um elistio said in the chat and he, and he was being like i mean facetious he's like if uh, he was talking about how vouchers some people think vouchers going to go up to a dollar 25 bucks they think and uh, he doesn't feel that's realistic i, I don't either like a, it, maybe a dollar one day I, I don't know but 25 again doesn't seem reasonable um but but i think it's interesting that there will never be a path to that if we don't try to sort of rethink the, the tokenomics of it. And this is one of our community members trying to think through the tokenomics plus tying it to Soulbounds in a cool and interesting way. And so, yes, leave your comments, leave your questions. Um, I'd love to have you come back again sometime real soon, Axler, and, and, and just hang out and chat Splinterlands generally, um, but even this oh, topic yeah. specifically. Yeah, I'd love to come back. Do you stream live? Do you do, uh, do, you do content? Uh, yes, I do content. Um, where, where do you do it? Uh, basically, on Twitch and YouTube, it's uh, slash NFL guides. Yeah. And uh, so I'm out there. Uh, the one thing I don't do well is I don't have a set schedule. This is about the same time of day I stream. I just don't have a set schedule of like uh, ahead of time if I'm going to be live that day or not. Mm -hmm. Um one of these days, I hope to get more set on a schedule. Uh, I was on Splinterlands TV forever and a day. And when that stopped, I just haven't got myself back on a set schedule. Yep. Yeah, same here, even like with my live schedule. So thank you all for hanging out today. I just want to say that to like 30 people or whatever hanging out. Appreciate you. I'm going to wrap up here, guys, but just I'm going live again, I think on Thursday or no, I'm going live on Wednesday with um, that'll be members only. And I'll be hanging out with Oscu, who's one of the time and attention guys. We're talking about rebellion cards. We're talking about rares, epics, legendaries. We're skipping the comments. And what are the most sort of like, are there any of them that are underwhelming? And if so, which ones are they? So we're getting into that. That'll be a members only live. So if you want to check that out, check out the mem my YouTube page and see if you want to join and become one of the members. If not, um, I, some parts of it might reach the uh, general YouTube page. So thank you guys for hanging out today. Axel Twinblade, thank you for coming to hang out. Thank you for this amazing website. I'm enjoying it uh, from viewing my own land. And I appreciate your time today, bud. Yeah, it's been great. Uh, I can't wait to talk again. We'll do it again. Okay, guys, have an amazing day. Bye for now.